So in this section now, I'm going to talk about another TCP option. Once again, a, a device does not have to implement this, although just from doing sniffer traces on my laptop, it seems like it's pretty standard. Something called selective acknowledgments. So before we go into selective acknowledgments, let's look at what happens without selective acknowledgments. So let's just walk through each one of these steps here, and I'll explain it. So in step number one right here, I think it's pretty clear, the client sends some sort of a request, like an HTTP request or what have you. Now in step number two, we have multiple things going on at one time. The server sends a segment. So this first line right here is one segment. So this is the first segment of data. It's also in the acknowledgment field, acting the request. So whatever the sequence number was in here, he's acknowledging it. So he sends segment one, segment two, and segment three. Because remember, when TCP is given the go ahead, it's sort of like a gun going off. He can shoot multiple bullets at one time if he's got them all queued up. So he's got three segments. So here we go. And as each segment is sent, we place it into the retransmission queue in case we have to retransmit it. So by the time we get down to here, notice that segments one, two, and three have all been placed in the retransmission queue. Now step number three, Segment two, which just followed a few you know, milliseconds or microseconds after segment one, segment two gets lost. There's some network congestion, some buffer on some router somewhere got totally full, and it dropped it. So in step number four, this is where segment number one very first hits the client. Okay, So the client gets that. Now, the way that TCP works, like we said, is that most likely, because these segments are just coming in and they're just spaced like milliseconds apart from each other, if that, what's going to most likely happen is segment one and segment three are going to hit the client almost at the same time. So even though this show is acting segment one, what's really happening in the background is when the, when the CPU process and the client says, OK, TCP, go ahead and do your job. TCP will look and they'll say, oh, OK, well, I've just got two segments that are in my queue that just came in, segment one and segment three. Now he'll say, okay, for, so for segment one, I'm going to create an acknowledgement for that. So there goes the acknowledgement, acknowledging all the bytes in that. Now when the client, and so here in step number five, the sender says, okay, I can remove segment one from the retransmission queue. It was acknowledged. Segment two and segment three, though, they're still in there. I, they have not been acknowledged yet. Now, back here, when the client was creating these, these acknowledgments, he says, okay, I got segment one, I can acknowledge it. Then he said, huh, interesting. I got another segment, but the bytes are not contiguous. If I look at where the bytes left off in segment one, and I look at where the bytes start in this next segment, there's a hole. There's, there's some gap in between. So the way that TCP responds to that is, is he sends a duplicate segment of segment number one. Remember, remember how this worked. Segment number one, let's say it had, let's just go right here, let's say it had sequence number of 100. And then it was followed by 300 bytes of data. 300 bytes of data. So that being the case, segment number two what would you expect the sequence number to be in segment number two? It'd be the sum total of these, right? 100 plus 300. So we would expect segment number two to have a sequence number of 400. So here in this duplicate ACK, so that's what happened in this first one. In this ACK here, he says, OK. In the ACK, he said, I'm ACKing 400. He says, in that very first one you gave me, you start out with sequence number 100, and when I counted all the bytes, the very last byte I had was 400. So I'm acknowledging that I got that. And so the sender would look at that and say, okay, now I need to start on byte 401 in the next segment. And then, 
right here, when he got segment number three and the client said, uh-oh, there is a hole missing, he once again acts 400. It's a duplicate of this. So now in this particular case, this is now the server's first indication is, oh, wait a second. I already sent segment number two. Why is he saying, hey, I got up to byte 400, send me what's after that. Why is he saying that again? Clearly, segment number two must not have gotten there. So here in step seven, and notice he's also not getting an act for segment three. This acknowledgement here never indicated that the client actually got segment three. Now he's buffering. When the client gets this, he says, look, even though it's out of order, even though there's a hole in the, in the middle, I'm not just going to throw this segment away. I'm going to buffer it. Hopefully the, the missing bytes will show up when I create this duplicate ACK. But notice in this duplicate ACK, all it's telling the other guy is, hey, um, I already told you I was expecting byte number 401, still expecting it. I got something. I got a segment. I got some bytes. I'm not going to tell you which bytes I got, but I am going to create a duplicate ACK and tell you, hey, I'm still expecting byte 401 next. So what does the, the server do? Well, eventually segment two and segment three time out, right? The retransmission timeout value expires. And in step eight, he retransmits segment two and segment three. And hopefully this time he'll get acknowledgements for both of them. Now, before I go on to the next slide talking about selective acknowledgements, couple things I want to point out here. So the way TCP works is that if I send a segment, segment one, and we'll just say sequence number, this is make it easy, one bytes equals 100. Then here's segment number two. Well, let's do two of them to make it easy. Segment two, sequence number, okay, well, it's going to be 101 because it's the initial sequence number plus those bytes. So it'll be 101. This also has another 100 bytes. Let's actually do four segments. And we'll keep them all the same. Segment three, segment four, sequence number 201, sequence number 301, and the bytes are always going to be 100. Okay, if segment two gets lost, what are we going to see? Well, here we're going to get an acknowledgement, acknowledgement, and it's going to say sequence 101. Now remember, what does 101 relate to? Remember, the, because it started out with sequence number one, that means the 100th byte was counted as 101, right? Byte number one, so if it, we start with sequence number one, byte number one was sequence two, three, four. So when we got to the 100th byte in this chain, it actually had sequence number 101. So that's what we're acknowledging. We're saying, I got that. I got up to 101. If this is lost, what TCP does is when it gets another segment, it says, well, I can't acknowledge that explicitly because there's something before it I've missed. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm just going to send a duplicate acknowledgement of what I last sent. The very last acknowledgement that what I sent is what I'm going to send here. And the same thing's going to happen when this frame comes in. That's going to trigger a duplicate acknowledgement. So this guy here, the guy in blue, the sender, he can infer a couple of things from this. Number one, he can say, all right, well, the last byte that the guy received was byte number 101. So this next sequence here, this started out with byte number 102, he didn't get that because I never got an acknowledgement for that. So I know that. 
He says, I know that this segment right here, at least, maybe more, but at least that one he didn't get. Then he also says, look, the only way he would have created a duplicate acknowledgement in the first place is if he received something. He had to receive a segment in the first place to generate this duplicate acknowledgement. Clearly he didn't get this segment, but maybe he got segment three. Maybe he got segment four. Matter of fact, let's do this. Let's say that segment th three was also lost. So all that made it was segment one and segment four. What would we expect? We'd expect only a single duplicate acknowledgement, right? When segment four came in, the receiver would say, okay, I got a segment here, but it's out of order, so I'm gonna create a dupl one duplicate acknowledgement because I got one segment that's out of order, and I'm gonna send that. So the guy here in blue, once again, he says, okay, after byte number 101, something's been missed. I don't know what's been missed. It could be bytes in segment two, segment three, segment four. I don't know. Uh, actually, he knows that at least segment two was missed, at least that, maybe more. And he says, this duplicate acknowledgement means that in addition to segment two being missed, he must have received one other segment, one other segment. So that was the original way that TCP did it, where these duplicate acknowledgements told you where the bytes that were missing started, where the missing bytes start, but you don't really know what segments he did get. So eventually, all those segments you sent after the missing one have to time out and be resent again. So that's when they came up with TCP selective acknowledgements. Now this is an option. It's negotiated during the three-way handshake. Both devices have to agree to it. If you want to read the gory details of this, it's in RFC 2018, so 2018, RFC 2018. And here's the way this works. Same scenario. So in step number one, the request for data goes out. In step number two, same thing. We send segment number one, which also acknowledges the request. Segment two, segment three. Segment two gets lost, same thing. Now here at step number four, he creates an ACK for segment one. Nothing different there. So when that goes here, in step five, we remove segment one from the retransmission queue. So, so far, everything is identical to the previous slide, but here is where things get different. Now, when segment number three comes in, when this segment comes in right here, the client says, okay, I got something out of order, so I'm gonna create a duplicate acknowledgement. I'm gonna take this acknowledgement and duplicate it, but here's something special I'm gonna do. In the options field, because remember, a TCP header, just like an IP header has an IP options field, well, a TCP header has an options field that may or may not be there. In this case, in the options field, he's gonna put the selective acknowledgement. He's gonna put the selective ACK acknowledgement, and he's actually gonna say, hey, I received these bytes. In other words, if this segment right here started at byte 201 and ended at byte 405, that's what's gonna be in the selective acknowledgement. He's gonna say, I've got that. And so now the transmitter, he says, okay, I clearly know that in the duplicate acknowledgement, the duplicate acknowledgement means he's missing something. And the acknowledgement number itself can tell me that he got all of segment number one. So I can clearly assume he did not get segment number two, but then in the options field, I can see he did get segment number three. So I'll take segment number three out of the retransmission queue, and now I'll time out and just send segment two. And this is actually what it looks like in a sniffer trace. Here's the acknowledgement, and right down here, the SAC option. It says, look, these are the bytes I got out of order. I got byte 18825, I got the byte with sequence number 18825 all the way to byte with sequence number 20273. So the sender can remove these, oops, he can remove those from the retransmission queue and now he knows what's missing in between. 
So that's how the TCP selective acknowledgement mechanism works.